uh, the practice changing. The important one here from small cell lung cancer space, which has been in fact a success story after a long time, is Adriatic Study. Another plenary discussion from ASCO 2024, where Durvalumab was used as a consolidation therapy in limited state small cell lung cancer, which demonstrated PFS and overall survival benefit. Here at ESMO 2024, we saw further updates based off of PCI outcomes in these patients. Stephen, can you please walk us through the study design and the recent update here? Sure, this is a study for patients with limited stage small cell lung cancer, so disease that can be encompassed in one tolerable radio thrust, radiation port. Patients completed chemoradiation first, then were enrolled in Adriatic, and so the design mirrors Pacific. Uh, they were randomized to receive Durvalumab or placebo, and then a third arm of Durvalumab plus the CTLA-4 inhibitor Tremolimumab that hasn't been reported yet. And what we showed was that adding Durvalumab significantly improved progression-free survival and overall survival. Now, the hazard ratio is actually pretty similar to what we see in extensive stage, but the absolute improvement, instead of being two months, it was two years. And so uh, seeing that profound impact tells us we want to identify these earlier, and really Durvalumab has become, I think, best practice standard of care after chemo radiation. These are phenomenal results. But because it's a very heterogeneous population up until enrollment, there were some questions. Patients could receive a, a lot of different types of therapy before they enrolled. Uh, the question that uh, Professor Suresh Senan presented at, at ESMO is, did those things impact the benefit of Durvalumab? For example, patients could have received once daily radiation or twice daily radiation. Uh, was one of those in particular, did we see more benefit from Durva? Uh, and really what we saw is all the subgroups, however you got to the point of completing uh, chemo radiation, whether you had once daily or twice daily radiation, whether you had prophylactic cranial radiation or not, and whether you had cisplatin or carboplatin, Durvalumab delivered pretty similar benefit. Now the absolute benefit, the absolute survival numbers at least, were greater for those who had PCI. Now, this study wasn't designed to really show the benefit of PCI, and the reality is patients who were given PCI were younger, better performance status, uh, and really it may be selection bias. I think the same is true for twice daily versus once daily radiation. We've fallen in these patterns before where we uh, overreach and really assume that it's from the intervention, when really it's because of the reasons they were given that intervention. What was interesting, though, is that the carboplatin arm seemed to do better than the cisplatin, which we weren't expecting, which goes against all the other studies we've seen. And again, I wouldn't make too much of that. Uh, right now, regardless of how you complete your treatment for limited stage small cell lung cancer, Durvalumab really should be offered afterwards. Uh, and really, this is the right approach, giving Durvalumab after the radiation. At Astro 2024, we did see that LU005 showed that you know, giving atezolizumab with radiation, with concurrent chemo radiation, uh, was not beneficial. Pacific 2, giving Durvalumab with concurrent chemo radiation, not beneficial. Wait till the radiation's done, let people recover, and then begin the immunotherapy. Stephen, thank you so much for touching on that. A few things to reiterate. Multiple studies, including just the data, as you've mentioned from yesterday at Astro, concurrent immunotherapy with radiation, higher toxicities, and most of these studies are indeed negative. Coming back to Adriatic, do you think this is going to change your practice where you're still leaning into PCI a little more in limited stage, or the data is not convincing enough where you feel just consolidated um, immunotherapy is good enough in these patients? Yeah, it's a, a great question, and I think there's still equipoise to ask that question, but to me, these data don't show that. Really, those decisions were made before, and uh, when we look at the demographics for both twice daily and PCI, clearly the patients were younger, had better performance status. That alone can really explain the differences here. Uh, what we need are prospective studies, but fortunately, there are two ongoing. In the U.S., the Maverick study being run through the cooperative groups will help answer that question. In Europe, the Prima Lung study run by the URTC will help answer that question. So those data will need to convince me. To me, the burden really is on showing that there is benefit because there is significant cost. And when we think of patients that we're curing, and we're, we're curing more people now with Durvalumab here, uh, if we're cured of their small cell, but leaving them with dementia or significant neurocognitive effects from radiation that maybe didn't provide benefit, I think that'd be quite quite a tragedy. So to me, I think there is still a question to be asked. I do not think it's wrong to deliver PCI, but I also don't think it's wrong to observe with MRI. It's discussion with our patients. I'm um, really, this is uh, patient-centered and we, we just need a little bit more perspective data in the MRI era exciting times. Stephen, thank you so much for this comprehensive review. These studies are truly shaping the future of lung cancer treatment. For our listeners, let us go over a quick recap from this discussion. In today's discussion with Dr. Stephen Liu, we've covered key abstracts both in non-small cell lung cancer and small cell lung cancer from ESMO 2024. 
Also Martineb, an unresectable stage 3 EGFR mutated non-small cell lung cancer is the new standard of care after concurrent chemo radiation. We've also touched on the recent updates and approvals of amivantamab based off Mariposa and Mariposa 2 data. Finally, in limited state small cell lung cancer, Dervalumab for two years is now in fact the standard of care after concurrent chemo radiation. Make sure to also check out our GI, GU, and breast cancer highlights from ESMO 2024. We are the Oncology Brothers.